I managed to get my spirals from this to this just in under two weeks and in this video we're gonna show you how. Hi everyone and welcome back. For those of you who are new here, we are Bruno and Faye and we just started figure skating about six months ago. This week we wanted to do a bit of a different type of video from our past several ones and share a bit of tips on how we've been working on our moves in the field test. So spirals have been my biggest struggle since the beginning, since we found out they were in the first two moves in the field test, that was my nightmare. <laughs> This is something that we don't use in our dance style. Not guys, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, flexibility is not my forte. So the biggest problem with my spirals was that I could not lift the leg high enough to be passable on the two tests without bending my knees. Do you know like those people that cannot touch their toes? That's me. That's how bad it was. My hamstrings are like super tight. So this is something I really got serious about. So I started doing the, some exercises for two weeks straight. That's when I really started noticing a big difference. And that's what uh, pretty much motivated me to keep going and keep doing the exercises until I got them passable on the test. <laughs> Just as a bit of a disclaimer, we are by no means no figure skating coaches, nor are we trying to be. We just felt like the way that we got Bruno to work on his spirals while preparing for the test worked out so splendidly well using our dance experience that we had for a while. So we thought we'd share it with you guys in case these tips could help you also if you're struggling with the same problem. So what we discovered by working on the spirals ourselves is that there are three main components that make a good spiral. It's flexibility, it's strength, and it's balance slash core strength that pretty much leads to good balance. And we got some dance exercises that we use in ballet and contemporary dancing and in Brazilian Zouk that we teach to help with each of those components. If you're working on spirals right now, your first task is to identify where your problem area is. Are you not flexible enough to lift the leg up as high as you want it to be? <laughs> Are you not strong enough to hold it there? Or can you do it but you're just struggling with the balance in that position? And then you can work from there. So guys, even though flexibility was my main struggle, I still worked on the three main areas daily for two weeks. And I feel like this is why my spirals improved so much from pretty much zero to passable. So the first main hurdle we face with spirals is flexibility, which is what Bruno has been mostly struggling with. So I'm gonna show you quick, easy, gentle stretches for beginners that help Bruno increase his flexibility and lift his leg higher. The important one for this one is to make sure that your knee is at 90 degrees, that you're not pushing your weight forward because that's really bad for your knees. From here, if this is working fine, you can start rocking it forward and back a little bit to get a bit of a dynamic stretch. If this is getting easy, put your knee down on the floor. If this is easy, also your third stage would be to try and land your elbows on the floor as well. That is not mandatory, this is just your natural progression with this stretch. From here, to help with the hamstring flexibility, you're gonna Strengthen both knees, put the hands on either side of the front foot and try to hold this position. If this is hard, if you're not reaching, it's okay to be wherever you can be. As long as you keep both knees straight and try to reach for the floor until you can lend your hands. The last one that Bruno has been doing is the downwards dog. Yoga is generally super helpful with flexibility. I'm just gonna walk out my feet slightly away from my hands and try my best to put the heels on the floor, keep the knees straight and keep my tailbone facing up towards the ceiling. Try to avoid this situation. This is a good start, but you should aim to straighten up. Once you're in the downwards dog, just so you don't feel stuck just sitting here, a good dynamic stretch is to start walking out your feet. Yeah, so lift your heel one at a time and then bring it back to the floor. 
The second big issue is strength. It's hard enough to lift the leg up there, but now you gotta hold it there also. For strength, we're mostly working on our lower back and our glutes. I'm gonna show you the one exercise that we did in several variations that we found very effective. From downwards dog, so you can do it right after stretching, you're gonna lift up one leg, you're gonna do it one at a time, you're gonna try to hold it there, and then you're gonna add little pulses at your highest position. Once you're done, switch the legs and do it to the other side. If downward dog is a little difficult, you can again do the lighter option of the exercise and lift your hands up to a couch or coffee table or whatever low furniture you have at home and do the same exercise. This next one is good if you have a partner. You're gonna lift your leg like before, but instead of bouncing it up, you're gonna have your partner gently pressing down on your leg and not letting you lift it while you're trying your absolute best to lift it up until you cannot do it anymore. He's shaking. Once you're flexible enough to lift the leg where you want it to be and strong enough to hold it there, comes your third issue. Now you get a balance in that position. For that, you need to have strong core and strong back. That really helps with your balance. And I'm gonna show you a few exercises to help with that. For this one, after you're done with your stretching and your little kicks, you're gonna just fix this position in place, find your balance, let go of your hands, and try to bring them into your spiral position and hold it as long as you can. This is very challenging, but very nice for your balance. If you can do it from your downward stop position, even better. It's way more challenging, but also more rewarding. So after you finish your kicks, fix the leg, walk your hands all the way to your standing foot, look up ahead, engage your back, and when you're ready, lift the hands. This last one is a bonus. It's to improve your control when you're either switching between the different edges on your spirals or just switching feet when you're going straight forward. I know for a fact we struggled with that quite a bit and we found this quite helpful. This is the exercise we use a lot in ballet that helps ballerinas develop strength, control and nice clean movement with their grand butt mom. So this is what we're gonna do. You're gonna go to the edge of the rink if you're on the ice and put your toe pick, dig it in the ice so you're nice and stable. Or if you're doing it at home, again, you can do it on a kitchen counter, on your desk, whatever you have to hold on to. What you're gonna do now, you're gonna extend your working leg behind you, nice pointed line, straight knee. You're gonna put an effort to kick it as high as you can, and then you're gonna try to use your muscles to catch it at that most upwards position and control its descent on the way down. Once the toe touches the ice or the floor, you're gonna kick it up right away with all your strength all over again. And then again, control it on the way down. This helps your body learn and memorize the muscle work for controlling your leg on the way down when you switch position, rather than just kind of falling out of it, which is what Bruno and I like to do a lot. But you know what? We're working on it. And this is all we got for you guys this week. Hopefully these tips help you if you're in a situation like me where you're struggling with the spirals. And uh, we'll have more videos next week, guys.